Hey everybody, what up ladies and gentlemen, I'm back to drive this truck. This is fake trucking, real talking. I'm Thomas. And I'm Dustin. As he already said. Damn right. Well, I like saying my name, it's a good name. And we're going to be with you for the next hour or so. Were we on a job last time? Uh, I think we just delivered a job. Oh, well sweet, I can get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so fuck you bailed you. on the podcast last... Glory. Because I decided to cook a nice dinner for my lady. Yeah. And That's what your priorities are? Yes, my priorities are actually in that relationship. Over this podcast. For the one day a week I get to see her? Yes. You son of a bitch. I'm sorry if my schedule changes and I never one put of us my girlfriend time. over this Not podcast, over it. or over this podcast. Did you have a girlfriend at the time of this podcast? No, never. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> then go to hell, sir, because you certainly abandoned us on other <laughs> interesting things. Oh, yeah. No, I make it super clear to people. Yes. I remember your exact words are, oh, yeah, fuck you guys. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> fuck anything y'all have planned. So I really didn't feel that bad, but I was still like, hey, I'm going to go do this thing, and I want you to be aware of it. Well, no. Where the I, Thomas thing would be just not to tell anybody. No. And when anyone calls and asks. See, I would not, I would not put any girlfriend over this podcast. I might have to change the recording time. <laughs> but. Well, that's kind of what we did today. Well, no, but see, here's the key thing is you didn't tell me beforehand. I didn't remember. I, I, and I was see, kind of. See, I, that's my point. I was blinded by sex. Okay, I thought you were going to say something else. Like what? Like maybe an L word, and then I was going to puke in my hands. Can you take a job already? You're talking about love all of a sudden. Because that's how that phrase normally goes. Yeah, no, I was not blinded by love. You don't love her? Don't get me wrong, she's really awesome. Alright, so I need to. Dustin, do you know a thing about yourself that you get really excited about shit? Like, you're real pumped about stuff. And it could be a month or two later, and you're like, ah, whatever. I didn't like that anyway. I do that? Like what? What was I super pumped about that I just don't care anymore like about? your sub? Oh, yeah, no, fuck her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck that bitch. See, and there's... <laughs> See, and there's an audio recording. There's a record oh, God. of you being so excited about I that. I was. <laughs> and then time elapsed, and I learned more about what she was really like. And it became abundantly clear to me, man... I really should have read the fine print on that. It's like entering a cell phone contract for the first time. And you think to yourself, oh boy, I got a new phone. This is really cool. And then the new monthly charges come in. You're thinking to yourself, oh, well, maybe I can change how I am. And then you realize that changing yourself isn't the issue. It's your provider. <laughs> and I realized how shitty of a service I had selected. I don't even remember what the fuck I'm taking. Is that my trailer? Uh, your trailer is the green flag. On the map. What the fuck is that in correlation to me? This quarry is confusing. That doesn't kind of it's help. behind you. Yeah, but this place is really fucking confusing to navigate. So, yes. I like that you compare... Uh, My su a relationship to a cell phone contract? Yes, to a paid service. Yeah. That you qualitatively assess as a consumer. Yes. <laughs> That's how relationships are, kind of. You're going in for your, you're not, you're going in for yourself primarily. I don't think ladies would like to hear that. Well, ladies, this is how it's rolling. <laughs> you don't want to hear this. That's how every dude is really thinking. Fake trucking, real misogyny. <laughs> no, I mean it's not a, it's not a perfect metaphor, but was that assembly? Did I use a lot of like in that? I think I said like. We can go simile. Oh boy! Tracker. I think that was an analogy, not a simile or a metaphor. Okay, analogy will work as well then. Um, but when you go into a relationship, obviously you're looking for things that you like. Sure. And same way with cell I'm phones. I'm not saying you don't have any accurate comparisons there. <laughs> well, how is it misogynistic then? I, I, 
Listen, I ain't a, I ain't a lady. I don't make up the rules about what's misogynistic. I well, just, how was that misogynistic then? I just take their word for it. And I'm telling you. Were I'm ladies pretty... immediately texting you and going, "That misogynistic bastard compared me to a cell phone contract"? Based on my knowledge of, <laughs> of misogyny, of what women say misogyny is, that uh. Relating them to a purchasable item. Yeah. You know what, Dustin? I don't remember if I hit record. Do you remember me seeing that? Me Not doing... at all. We're going to cut. Cut! <laughs> Alright, it's going. No problem. I'll just... This is my fault. Yeah, we're dumb. Well, no, <laughs> wait. We're not dumb. He's dumb. Alright, uh, bring the game back up. Uh, you, here <laughs> we'll just leave you it. did this <laughs> you know we'll even leave this in <laughs> see our recording program ladies and gentlemen or are recording no, our voices perhaps isn't recording yeah perhaps is only recording this what perhaps only records the no. game yeah because I turned it off oh that's right you did you unfrapped us and now we have to resync the audio ladies and gentlemen I hope you include all this in here can you shut up beep Thank you. <clears throat> As I was saying, good sir. I just had to check. Now. I didn't I didn't want us to talk for an hour and then find out that it didn't go. No no I I'm cool with that. We obviously just need better memory of what we did. <laughs> because I've lost all momentum going up this hill with this <laughs> goddamn load. Yeah, and I just made a I just made like twice as much editing work for me this episode just because my memory is shitty it's all good i do the same thing at my job i'll operate my k-loader and then i get off of it reflexively i hit the power down switch on the machine yeah but i do it so second nature i stop halfway walking away from it and look behind me to make sure i turn the damn yeah. thing off yeah routine actions you you it's very easy to to not have any knowledge Fuck, of you do doing I get that. out of here I don't know. Like, uh, the time clock at work, I can't remember if I clock in or out for stuff. Yeah, it's... It's just such a rote action. It's so bad. And then I stop and catch myself and I double check constantly. I don't go down. Go reverse of the direction arrows. Yes. That's... See, I'm thinking. Using that there brain. I knew you were more than just the looks. So you're saying I'm the looks? No, I'm saying is I'd like to take I, you back behind a dumpster you, no, and uh, I heard you, Dustin. tongue punch your dark star for a few minutes, get yeah. you good and worked See, up. See, you're making jokes, but would it make you feel better if I confessed a deep-seated man love towards you? And now uh, that you have me alone inside of your apartment and these wine coolers you, you keep come, giving me, have you come to a complete stop because of the incline? I think so. Like, are you just, are you holding the accelerator down? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> We're gonna have to get down. <laughs> is, is, are we damaged? No. We're gonna have to get towed. No, no. And I'm, I'm kind of making it. The, Look. The guy's gonna drive over. <laughs> And we're going to be like, you need to tell us. And he's going to be like, why? We can't get up the hill. Our engine oh. just is not strong enough. Our it's... truck is too weak. Are we still... Eh. <laughs> oh my god. I'm making slight progress. Maybe try backing down and coming at it at a, at a high rate of speed. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> this is amazing. This is so terrible. Nope. It's not gonna work. Come on, turn for me, baby. There we go. Man, Incline you know is not that bad. You know what I'm sick of on the internet? What's that? 
is uh, it, it's really just put me in touch with uh, how many people have opinions about fucking pop stars. I don't give a shit. Why do these people give a shit? People need people to idolize. Like people, but no, it's not even that. Like people on that I'm friends with on Facebook giving their opinions about Justin Bieber. It's like oh, you're talking about regardless of whether they love or hate hate him. They just, just have spouting. opinions on it. It's like I like if if I'm friends with you on Facebook, I at least know you, and you like you've passed some basic checks with me. I don't think you're a complete fucking retard. And then you Trojan to horse your stupid fucking opinions <laughs> into my feed. I love it. I can just imagine a friendship Trojan horse. Yeah. Hey, Thomas, I've got a gift for you. Oh, boy. And you bring it into your city, and then you party and feast and get drunk, and you wake up and there's a bunch of Justin Bieber opinions <laughs> dotted around your Facebook. And you're looking going, no, what hath been wrought upon my kingdom? And, like, I'm reading it, I'm like, surely somebody's making a joke in here about, like... I'm just going to keep reading and I'll find out that it's just an elaborate joke about how they don't give a fuck about Justin Bieber. No, it's a genuine opinion. Like, you're talking about, talking about him and, like, what he does and, like, who he is as a person. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? It's, it's a part of our media. It's a part of our culture. I don't have opinions on the person. I don't listen to his who music. Cares? I know nothing about him other than he has a name and he's a pop star. That's it. I don't give a fuck. Fuck, and I dislike his music. That's that's really as far as my opinion goes. And like, fucking YouTube, constant with its with, like everybody just compares. Like the internet just compares shit with popular shit. Like uh, I saw there was a Tumblr post of fucking Justin Bieber standing in front of his goddamn car, some fucking super expensive supercar, mm. uh, and then Iron Maiden with a jet, basically saying like. You're a punk kid. Look at Iron Man. They have a jet. Who cares? If you like if you like Iron Maiden, like Iron Maiden and their stupid fucking jet. Why do you have to compare it to this fucking retard? Who cares? I, ca I don't understand. I, I love how worked up you are over this and how I'm just... Because all of the internet is doing it. I'm like, why? I don't spend enough time on the internet to care about that. It's great. You know what I do, Thomas? I live in the real world. It's pretty fucking fantastic. Because not one motherfucker except for you, has come at me <laughs> with anything to do with Justin Bieber. This is the first time I've heard anything Bieber-related from a real person in months. <laughs> and it's from a person who doesn't care about Bieber, who hates Bieber. But here he is going, Ugh! Ugh! I hate people's opinions about Bieber! Here's my opinion about how much I hate other opinions about Bieber! Listen to me! I hit a car. <laughs> Oh shit, wrong lane! Yeah! Yeah! I'm like swerving in real life. No, this, this is, is not my fault. I didn't do this. I didn't make the internet talk about what the internet no, talks no, about. No, no, this is your fault because you no, chose your reaction. No. You chose what to discuss. No, I and you not, chose Beaver! I, no, you I, got no. Beaver fever! I did not choose <laughs> to be incensed by their actions. I look have at no you. control look at over you. that. You chose to express it. No, fuck you. You chose to express it. Fuck you. You were like, man, I can't hold in all this Bieber fever. And you just let it explode all over the podcast. Fuck you. Audience, I'm sorry. I wish I could, like, put a spoiler alert at the beginning of this. Thomas put a spoiler alert at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> There's a lot of Bieber rage going on. Fuck you. <laughs> because oh, look, he's got the no, hetero look, man crush I'm now, not, huh? I'm not giving opinions Maybe on I'm the, the looks. person. Who cares? No, you're not. Uh, no, you're giving opinions I'm, about no. opinions. Yeah, no, what I'm doing is talking about the intelligence and behavior and posting habits of people on the internet. Based on the opinions of others. No, you're giving no, opinion on opinions. No, I am making inferences based on people's opinions. About yes, their opinions. Their interests, the way they live their lives. You're back and they snuck all this. It's about people. Yes, it is about people. And you're pissed they snuck all their Bieber fever on your page. Well, listen, Dustin. You can't mock people caring about people's opinions on the internet, because what are we? What yeah. is this right here? This is people's opinions on the internet. No, no, I'm not mocking them. I'm saying you are deliberate. Whatever you're doing is completely deliberate. Every word out of your mouth was deliberately chosen. How you're going to express it, in what format, when, when you chose to express it. Meaning, right. you so subjected me to your Bieber pain. <laughs> you deliberately did this, Thomas. <laughs> you chose to do this to me. What have I done to you? 
Again, I haven't heard anything about Bieber in months. It's fantastic. Occasionally, I'd walk by the TV and the news would be on. It'd be like, Bieber, and I'd be like, whatever. No, okay, you know no, what's great no. about this TV? I know a thing. I can change I, the no. channel. Fuck you. I can turn fuck it off. Fuck you. Shut the fuck up. I can up. walk out. I know there's a thing that you have heard about. I, you cannot have a, not heard about this because the what? fucking mainstream news was talking about it. The fucking VMA shit. VMA? Are you serious? Video Music Awards, right? Right. What VMA shit? Are you serious? The only thing I can even maybe guess is the Miley Cyrus thing? That's what I'm talking about. See? Okay. I told you! I told you! People giving their opinions yes. about people... And the only reason I did about. that, only reason I know about that was from a fucking internet meme where it like did a close-up See? From... See? Yes, yes, it's there. But it's not Beaver. That's not my point. When I, what did I say when I started this? I said giving their opinions about pop stars. And guess what? what is she? I'm not giving my opinion either. No, I'm talking about You're internet. dredging it up. I'm, You're no. fucking throwing nets into the depths of the internet and pulling up whatever you can. I'm talking about the internet giving their opinions unnecessarily about pop stars that I don't give a shit about. And you, you've suffered from it too. I have. You just but you know what was great? You just you know what was great? But it was I didn't funny. do it. It I was didn't funny. do it. That the one, internet did it. The Bieber you did. But that one was funny. Because it just said, mind the gap. And it was a close-up of the fucking Miley Cyrus like gap in between the legs and the fucking horrifying. pants. Yeah, it was. But it said, mind the gap. And I thought that was kind of funny. I was like, oh God. Can you zoom my GPS out, please? <clears throat> I, I, I haven't zoomed in for David because he can't fucking see. Yeah, I know. He's blind. But he has glasses. I don't know what the fuck it, is wrong with people that, that wear glasses and still can't see. Maybe he's not wearing the right prescription. Like he, he obviously can't or hasn't. I don't understand why someone would do that, but on the other hand, I like that was just never an option to me. Mm. Like I get a headache if I don't if I'm not wearing like the precise right. Yeah. I need mine for details. Yeah. Without I, I mean I can drive without them, I can read yeah, without them. Yeah, this is the thing. If you're wearing your glasses and you can't see, yeah. What are you doing? <clears throat> the very fine details in this game, I need them to see. Like the the writing in our GPS area. Yeah. I would have a lot of trouble like making that out. Yeah, no, absolutely. But well, the point is you can see it with your glasses on. Yeah, I can see it with my glasses on. Well, what I just, if you were wearing your glasses and you couldn't still read then it? Then I would obviously be like, maybe. Uh, at the very <laughs> least, I would make a mental note and say, maybe my glasses are wrong. But I don't want my friends to know this. So I'm going to pretend I can read all this stuff. Yes, whatever it is you said we have down there, Thomas. That's totally what we have. Without glasses, I can barely tell that there's text at all. Shit. Like the money, I can. There's just like a vague yellow blur. I can barely see that it's there. Yeah, we've got like two million funny money. Almost three million funny money. Almost. K squiggly sees. K squiggly see. So yeah, morticians earlier. We were uh, really talking about those. Were we, talk, were we talking about morticians or corners? <clears throat> corners, corners. Because definitely. they're different. They are. Thing. They are. Mortician would be just kind of a fun job. If you could get over the fact that you're playing with Wait, dead people. Okay, so a mortician is somebody that works at a funeral home and prepares a dead body for a funeral, right? For the viewing, yes. Yes. Whereas a coroner <clears throat> does like... A coroner is going to do the autopsy yeah. and confirm time of death. Yeah. They do like the important stuff, like the investigative part of messing with dead bodies. Yeah. They, they figure out what <clears throat> happened with this dead body. Morticians put makeup on the dead body. And dress them. And embalming fluid. And put cotton up their butt. Seriously, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so weird when I found that out. Why did they do that? Um, to prevent leakage. That's awesome. <laughs> and I can only imagine, this can't be something simple as, well, I put an extra heavy tampon up there. I can only imagine it's fistfuls of, like, teddy bear stuffing being forcefully rammed up some dead person's butt. <laughs> like, uh, all right, I've packed about three pounds of cotton up there. Ain't nothing leaking out of that butt. That is going to be a dry butt. <laughs> Guaranteed. Driest butt I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I have weird imagination that just kind of runs. Um, but a corner would be... A, again, we were talking about David being really uncomfortable with me talking about random ways of dying. And him gaining, or at the very least, perceiving that he had a much more realistic sense of how fragile he was as a human being. But as a coroner, you get to kind of have that fun of figuring it out, and the real work would actually come from those mysterious deaths. Is everything okay? Dustin, you're calling me right now. Ooh. 
I'll explain that one in a moment. Ignore it for now. I said ignore it, Thomas. Okay. It's just distracted me because I had my phone under my nuts. And then... <laughs> and my hands have been on the controller the entire time. Yeah, what the hell? Ignore it, Thomas. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Play the game. All right, what, what, what were you talking about? Because I was completely distracted by you vibrating. Well, me ghost dialing you? You ghost dialing my balls. <laughs> without any... I, I did not detect any motion that would have caused that. I'm good at what I do. So what were you talking about? We were talking about corners and, again, pretty obvious. I feel like that would be an easy job. Obvious signs of death. Someone, they got shot in the heart. They're going to wheel him in. We need you to confirm the bullet in his heart killed him. Who the fuck is going to ignore you otherwise if you just I, sat down? I think down... the hard part of being a coroner is, you know, having the stomach to, you know, slice open a dead body. Yeah, but I figured if you got that far into the profession that you're a professional one. You've done enough autopsies in college. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Once you get over past, once you get past yeah. that part, yeah, it's probably easy. Wouldn't that be great though? They wheel in like the guy with the gunshot wound to the heart. And they're like, "Hey, check him out and confirm that it was the bullet." You decide to take an hour long lunch break. You go down to your local bistro, eat a badass roast beef sandwich, come back. Huh? Might as well make it look like I did something. So you just kind of make like a quick incision and then you sew it right back up. Confirmed. It was definitely the bullet to the heart. Who's going to be they any have the to sew it back up? Yeah. They never show that in TV shows. No, like, what do you think they do when they send it to the mortician? They I, I li- never thought about it. My knowledge of coroners is from TV shows. Okay, they, they don't... If they're not sending the body back, they don't have to sew them back up or anything. Oh, dude, the really creepy parts when they peel the whole skin off the head. Like, you see the TV shows and the head's still intact... Face and everything? Yeah. No. No, yeah. Fuck the TV that. shows bodies they, are just like pale actors. They will cut, they will grip, and they will peel, and it all comes off like a fucking banana peel. Face everything. It's so cool. Cool? Yeah, dude. That's awesome. That's disgusting. No, I think that is amazing. You get to see the muscles, the tendons, the tissues, the blood vessels. Um, if they That is cool to me. That's horrifying. But I mean, then, like, the real challenge for a corner is going to come in with the mysterious death, and you actually have to fucking work. I feel like that would be a lot of goddamn work. I've seen some of, like, the reality shows they have. They actually have a reality corner show. It was pretty cool, but I got pissed they kept blurring everything. Oh, we, we can't <laughs> show this human heart. Oh, we can't show this human this liver. This bullshit is like Japanese porn. It was pissing me off so bad. I'm like, no, let me see the heart. Because I suspect cardiac tamponade, and you will not let me see to confirm. And they just drop it in a weight thing, and they're like, hmm, this heart weighs about five pounds. It's a little heavy for this person. I'm like, and I know why! But you won't let me confirm! <laughs> and they drop the liver, they weigh all the organs individually. A lot of work goes into actually doing the job. You have to weigh every individual organ, even unrelated organs to it. Like... This person died from blunt force trauma to the head. Let's weigh every one of his goddamn organs. Why? It's obvious his brain was smashed in. Yes, but maybe a toxin hit him first before the brain was smashed in. So we look for the abnormalities. And I understand being thorough. I feel like this... Here's why I actually would be an easy job. Is because... Like, I've had to weigh stuff before, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're making sandwiches, you gotta weigh stuff. Yeah. But the difference with being a coroner is... You can say, hey, you want me to not fuck this up? Give me time. And that's really all you need to make a job easy. Is yeah. just have time to do it right. You have no pressure, because if, if, if people pressure you, you you can, and, you know. You're not going to be the best of your ability. Yeah. Thomas, you just compared a dead body to the perfect sandwich. <laughs> yep. Good chunk. You know, I was I was... They have a fucking TV at work, and I was walking through the break room, and there's the fucking History Channel on, and has some pawn shop show on. Yeah. And I was thinking... Which one? I don't I know there's fucking know. two or three or yeah, something. Yeah, no, there's a whole bunch of pawn fucking They have shows. to be fucking staged with the shit, like, I see... Guys in my Rescue Squad watch those shows. But they're also so boring that it's like, if this is staged, you could have... 
you could have made this more interesting. Well, no, no, no. The, the stage part I was referring to, one of them had a Oh, wait, customer... are you saying, like, stage events, but, like, people's reactions are real and the people are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because that... they had somebody flip their shit and piss all over the parking lot and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, nobody would do that. They know... They know what this place is. There's a lot of cameras. This has to be a staged event. Well, also, it's editing. Like, you can just... Make up whatever the fuck you want, really. You, you can create a story with editing. Yeah. Because, like, you can kick someone in the nuts, make them real angry, and then just not show the part where you kicked them in the nuts. And it's like, oh, man, that guy's crazy. He got yeah, angry. He was just no so reason. pissed. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas's fabrications. <laughs> it's this one-sided fight about why is everyone mad at me? Yeah, like, I, I don't know why, like, documentarians and everything. Like, you always cut the part... The part of them asking questions of people is always cut out. Why not just ask the most incendiary things you can? Mm -hmm. And then when they go absolutely bananas fucking crazy, just be like, oh, I, I don't know, I just asked him. Like, fucking dub in you asking a reasonable question. I don't, know, I don't know why you wouldn't just fuck with people. But I was watching that fucking... I mean, I wasn't watching it. I just walked through there, and I'm like, well, this show's dumb. It is. But it's on the fucking History Channel, right? Yeah. And at least that show, I could understand some historical aspect of, like... Because pawn shops, it's like, alright... Sometimes right. people bring in really cool things from an actual historical period. Or, or even just, if it's a super old thing from the... Even if it's from 1950s America. Yeah. It's still... Barely historical. Well, they do actually give some background to the objects, right. too. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, like hey, that... this doll was made back then. It was uh, back when... Yeah. It, they, they give its purpose, when it was made, how much would circulation, so clearly, popularity even. Clearly, they've made an effort to even tangentially relate these bullshit non-historical shows to history. Yeah. So... Ice Road Truckers is on History Channel. Or Why the was fuck? on... Why the fuck is that on? Well, see, this is what I'm saying. I've never seen an episode of that. Is there secretly a historical bent to that show? I've never seen a, I've never seen an episode? Or two, where they just like, well, listen, after we film it, then by the time it airs, it's history. We're, we're, it's a documentation of the past. <laughs> is that their tangential <laughs> rel relation to history? That, that more falls on, like, how lenient the term history applies to the History Channel. Well, fucking that pawn shop show is pretty goddamn lenient. The pawn shop show at least can say, look, items of history pass through here. We have 18th century items. Barely, and we give man. You... That, no. is, that is more historical Some than a goddamn documentary about frozen roads. <laughs> you know how hard it is to be a trucker on these frozen roads? Well, all of you lived last season. It couldn't have been but so bad. I mean, did they, though? I, I wouldn't I, know. I, I don't know. Like, it would be much cooler if we lost about 48 truckers last year. How many were there? Only 52. <laughs> Holy shit, that is a dangerous job. What's the hazard pay like? Worth it that we got another 100 applicants. Woo! What show is fucking Deadliest... I mean, what channel is Deadliest Catch on? Because you could say History Channel and I would I, believe... I, who the fuck hit me? I think you just hit the guardrail. Couldn't have. I was, like, steering close to it. Maybe the trailer's wider. Do we have wider? No. No. Damn, maybe because I was so close and my turn was hitting. I don't know. Um, as for Deadliest Catch, I have no fucking idea. Yeah, I don't fucking know. My mom's a huge fan of that show. Or was. Seriously? Yeah. Why? She likes some of those reality TV shows. Your family likes some of the reality TV shows. Why are you making that assumption? Because you told me. No, that's Scotty, dude. Oh, yeah, Scotty's family fucking loves that shit. It's really weird that, like, you mix me up with Scotty a lot. Well, you are pretty interchangeable. How is... We couldn't be... We are, like, cartoon opposites of each other. The reason y'all are interchangeable... Like, when, when they're... You know in a cartoon where they have you... a duo of people, they make all of their characteristics completely opposite? That's me and Scotty. The reason you're interchangeable, as I was about to say before you went on your little tangent about what kind of characters you were in a cartoon, <laughs> it's fantastic. I would love to watch the Scotty and Thomas show. Yeah. Except it would just be you arguing a lot and him going, whatever. That's great. 
No, I'm gonna eat a pizza. No, dude, it's Scotty. He'd go. He. He would be like. <laughs> doop, doop, doop. Yeah, that thing he does. Yeah. Um, it's because I relate you two to each other because through you, I met Scotty. Or no, no, through Scotty, I met you. Right. So, and Scotty is kind of removed. Was pretty much removed from the group at first. Like, not that we kicked him out or anything. It was just he. He was never part of that original group of friends we always had. He was a new entry. So you and him were kind of like a, a pair when y'all showed up, because you were shortly introduced. See, after I his arrival. infiltrated it, became core, and then tore the group asunder. How did you tear no, the didn't. group asunder? <laughs> I didn't, but yeah. I, I like to take credit for chaos and confusion. I mean, I know I did my share of things that might have caused a couple of problems here and there. No, we all know why what happened happened. What did happen? Moving on. Was, I think I know what happened. Moving on. Moved on. So yeah, dark times. Dark times are coming. What? You look so pissed off now. I love it. I'm just chewing on my lip, dude. It's kind of an angry looking thing. I think I have an angry looking face. Yeah. Also, your posturing is kind of, uh... I'm just sitting. No, no, no. Not right now, but when you're, like, standing. Oh, yeah. Your posturing is very uninviting. It does not say hug me. Sure. I don't know. But I still hug you. I'm a really lovable guy. Yeah, you are pretty friendly. Yeah. I like touching people and making them feel warm and cuddly. Thomas does not like heat. Particularly Yeah, no, you touched heat. me before and you touched me. Like, one, I don't like people touching me. But you, yeah. did, like, you didn't touch skin. I super yeah, don't like it that. Was, it was on your shirt. But I could feel your body heat. Yeah, and my body heat was getting through his shirt, and he was going, Ugh. So not okay. Ugh. All I could imagine is if I ever had to interrogate him for information, I would tie him to a chair and leave him with no shirt on and just have random people. I want a menagerie of fucking strangers coming up with warm, damp hands and laying them on you for 15 it's not seconds really the at a time. Part. I don't like absorbing someone else's heat. I want them to get you on the most heat sensitive areas. Inner thigh, armpit, touching your neck. I want these not to be, I want this to be a collection of men and women. Just uncomfortably going, touch, touch. See, like, skin contact is an intimate thing, I feel like. Ten hands at a time on you. I don't, like, I don't like handshakes. Handshakes are too intimate. Really? Yeah. Well, I thought that was mostly because of your hyperhidrosis. That too, but it's just too intimate. I don't want to touch your skin. I don't know you. Why am I touching your skin? Don't you know touch me, my though. skin. I, Dustin, I don't want to touch your skin. You're a dude. Yeah. But, I mean, you still give me handshakes sometimes. In my world... Uh, in Thomas land... I would only touch ladies that I was sexing. There's no reason to touch anyone otherwise. I, I really can't bring a counterpoint. Touching is an intimate thing. I mean, you can do... And there are more intimate uh, like, ways of greetings. Oh, like, on clothes, you can touch somebody, like... Like patting somebody on the back. That's okay. Because <laughs> I, I feel like in your world, there would be the special handshake glove <laughs> that you would keep on your person. That's actually genius. And, and if you met someone, you both looked at each other, cordially nodded, donned your handshake glove, and extended arms to show a display of great trust because with gloved hand, you touched. You went, hmm. See? And it was a special glove made ensuring that you would never transfer heat between each other if worn for a brief amount of time. So you would only feel glove See, here, on here's glove. The thing. I prefer the fist bump to the handshake, not only because of my hyperhidrosis, mm -hmm. and not only because of the skin contact thing, but because, uh, like, the hand is a very intimate spot. It, like, the, 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 the palm of your hand. That like there's so many nerves there. Yeah, I don't want to feel someone else, especially another dude, on that spot. Are you spot. scared of getting an erection if another dude touches you? No, I just find it unpleasant. So fist bump is pre is preferable, especially since since it is a short contact, there is low body heat transfer. But the problem oh, is back to body heat. You still feel their hand, like you still feel their skin. So my ideal world would actually be now that you've just made up that genius idea would be. Don, special glove, fist bump, take off glove. Now, since we're friends, we've moved up to skin on skin, fist bump. See that? That felt 
Felt weird because you're thinking about it. I felt your skin. I don't you're like really thinking about it and it's bothering you. Yeah. Thomas World is unique and interesting. Don't touch people. There's no reason to touch <laughs> I people. I love that. Don't touch me. No. I like touching people, though. I, I, I enjoy laying my hands upon others. I don't want to be touched. And not in, like, Except some by ladies. vulgar... It's never in a vulgar fashion. It's ladies, just... you can touch me all day. I'll be sure to invite a few over particulars that you know. Yeah. <laughs> he did. That is an invitation not to all ladies. Only special ladies. Yeah. Only those that need my approval. You have to meet the Thomas checklist. No one ever receives more higher than a 9.8 because there's always room for an improvement. Thomas you, is really holding out do for you a really 10. Think I, do you really think I'm like that? No, not at all. Because I'm the opposite. Like, I'll hand out 10s all day. If I think you're fucking hot, fucking 10. I just love the idea of you being posh about the interview process. I, I, I love the idea of you having an interview process. I fucking... No, I'm not getting off this, Dustin. I fucking hate guys that are like, there's not a 10. 10s aren't real. She's like a 9.7, dude. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Am I hard? Yes, no. That's it. I was going to say 10 is subjective. Yeah, think, subjectively, think... there's all sorts of fucking 10s. Yeah. Is she hot? Is she super hot? Fucking 10. I'll hand out 10s all day long. Like $10? I could use $10. No. I was just doing like a also, funny Also, I think quote. the rating system is stupid because, like... Like, just the whole numbers game anyway? Well, just insisting that there is, like, one universal attractiveness scale that women exist somewhere on that spectrum of is ridiculous. Agreed. Holy fuck, I'm never gonna get through here. Until I do this! <laughs> and you didn't hit anything. I know, I'm amazed. Dustin, I'm really hungry. I could use something to eat. I was actually, gonna, I was no, gonna, I'm actually good. I, I was going to eat yogurt before you got here, but then I forgot. So now I'm hungry. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, yes, feed, Thomas, feed. See, I could get up and abandon you and eat yogurt. You could. I could. Seriously, man, I've been on... I just took, it took me fucking forever to get out of England. That was terrible. Well, maybe you're just a bad driver. Well, the roads were incredibly slow as I bumped something. So much traffic. Ugh. It's the reason I never like going there. The rule switch and the roads are terrible. Here in most of other You're Europe, saying you hate England. Are you England racist? I am England phobic. So I think that would be an Anglophobe. Then that is what Oh wait I no, am. well Anglophobe would be a fear of like the culture and the people. Yeah. Not necessarily the place itself. I just don't like its roads. <laughs> That's really what this all boils down to. I don't like its roads. Break that down to a specification for me. I don't know. Because I don't have anything. Anyway, um... If I, I don't know... have a lot of use for... Like, people think it's intelligent if you know a lot of, like, extremely specific words. But I don't find any use in that. No, it's not intelligent. It's useful in specific situations. Uh, well, no, but what I'm saying is that, like... <clears throat> The, the communication of the idea is not changed by you having a specific word for something that you can say with just normal words. I think that can actually, I think it actually could, but only like between friends who really understand why you would use that word over another. But that's, no. that's more of an intimate and personal I detail. think it's more important that you can communicate all your ideas within words that everyone knows. Oh, it's more important for that. But I'm saying it could be more, the idea can, the, the, the can, what means of conveying it could be more important to another person through that means. What the fuck does that mean? Like, I don't even really have an example. Like, say you would use gnarly for something cool. That's not what I was talking about. Oh, uh, what were you talking about then? I was talking about, like, we were talking about specific... Like, we were, we were just talking about Anglophobe. your phobia of... It's not a phobia. It's genuine. It's a real thing. All right. But your dislike of English roads. Yes. And then we were talking about what that would be called. Mm -hmm. And then I was saying I don't have a lot of use for highly specific words. Like a word that would mean a fear of English roads. Oh, okay. In that sense. Yeah. Because that doesn't have any applicability in any other 
How often are you going to use that word when you could just say a fear of English roads? I'm about to say, you probably have to explain it every time you even said it. That's what I'm saying. By, by, like, people you, think you were literally it, creating more conversation for yourself. People think it's intelligent if you know extremely specific words, but I don't find that intelligent at all. Mm. You're, you're, all you're doing is risking alienating the people you're trying to communicate with. Okay. In that sense, 100% correct. Yeah. I heard you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> it's hungry. Uh, I have like a lot of time at my job to sit and think. Like, I still operate my machinery. I do my job. But my K-loader isolates me from the rest of my workforce. I'm 20 feet in the air above everyone. Uh, it's loud. It's noisy. I wear earplugs. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, everyone else wears them only for when the plane pulls up. No, I never take mine fucking out. And then everyone's wondering why their hearing tests are degrading and mine are staying at a good steady <laughs> level. One of our guys has 50% hearing loss in one ear. And I'm like, fuck you, how do you always get perfects? Because I wear these all day at this job. I don't care if y'all think they're a little uncomfortable. They're not. And you know what's great? Being able to hear when I do something like this. <laughs> so, I'm still doing my job, but I'm thinking to myself. And today, in particular, I climbed up my ladder, pulled up to the plane, got to where I could just delegate the entire task of my brain functions to secondary nature to pull off my job, because it is simple. And I thought, man, this has been a good weekend. My girlfriend's dad, she really liked the truffles I made. That's pretty awesome. Then I thought, my dad never liked anything I made. And I went into a horrible dark place of self-doubt and father issues as I began to realize, well, not realize, but remember how shitty of a father I have. Are you not joking about this? Is this not a joke? No, it's not a joke. There's no punchline here. There's no punchline. This is just... As an adult male, you genuinely care about what happened with your father? At some point, I really wanted to have a relationship with him. It just never happened, no matter how hard I tried. Man, I... And I was... And I'm, I don't care as much, but it still pisses me off. Like, that sounds normal, but I'm just saying for my... The, for my life, I have no ability to understand that. And that's you. Yeah. And that's that's cool, I I'm guess. I'm probably busted, but it's just like, even as a kid, no, not desirous of that relationship, and as an adult, super don't give a fuck. I don't... I'm, I forget I have a dad sometimes. Same here. Like, I totally forget about him. I'm like, you're completely irrelevant to my life. It's... He is in the same boat with me, but what pisses me off is the effort I applied to try, and how I really wasn't good at conversation. I got so emotionally caught up at times in an effort to to build something with him that his flimsy half-assed excuses waylaid me enough that i was like oh that explains things and i dropped the subject for a week until it dawned on me oh that was a fucking weak excuse then i go back and i fall into the same goddamn trap how over old and over would you would you be when that happened um i was like 17 at the time all right so the first time, or sorry, like later on, I've been trying to do things with my dad throughout my entire life. And just got more and more desperate as I went on. That's so weird. And not in the sense where I was desperately trying. Is that a but barge? I think that's a that's shipping a barge. That's a fucking big ass barge. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. But um, I was like, you, you were never a father to me. You were really close to the shore. Sometimes they park there. I mean, maybe it's waiting for another ship. Maybe there's a yard here we don't know about. Anyway. Yeah, so I was telling him what a shitty father he had been to me my entire life. How he sucked. He never taught me anything. He just simply existed. His excuse that it threw me off, and I'll tell you why it threw me off. It's like, well, my dad was never around to teach me anything, so... I mean, that's why it is like it is. He never opened up to me before in any sense of the word. To even learn anything about my dad, I always had to ask my mom. So hearing him say that excited me. It's like, oh my god, he just told me something about his life. He's never told me shit. So I let it slide, and I'm like, oh man, he really opened up with those few words. Let time progress, hear what he said, let it sink in enough to be like, oh man, that piece of shit excuse. Go back to him, that is no excuse to be a shitty father just because your dad wasn't around. And he sucked, and I'm sorry about that. And that's probably why I never met him. But that's no excuse for you to be a shitty dad. He committed suicide. 
oh man, that's so deep. And I walk away again. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he could just give me this scrap of paper. And I was so excited to even get that because I'd never gotten the scrap of paper before. I thought it was really neat. Dustin, you're such a little pussy. I didn't know any better at the time. No, you're such a little girl. Dude, imagine imagine trying to build this relationship. Compare this with my experience with my dad, where I was, I had, like, I was, I, I, if I was given any choice, I would not have seen him. I, my mom had left him, and they were in the process of getting divorced, so I would only have to go over there uh, once for a couple hours on Wednesdays, and every other weekend I would have to go over to his house. And I hated doing it, never wanted to do it, didn't ever want to fucking go over there, but my mom made me, because she didn't want to see my ass, and uh, one time he drove us out to the city where he grew up, and drove us all over the place, telling us about the job he had, and the high school he went to, we had to go into his high school, <laughs> we walked on to, like, this is, it's the house that he grew up in, but... It's someone else's property. It's been mm -hmm. someone else's property for years. We have no idea who lives here. And he's fucking walking all over there, like, up to their front door, basically. Not like, not like knocking on it and be like, hey, can we look around or something? Or do you mind if we're out here being weirdos? Just <laughs> walking around on somebody's property. Mind if I do that old thing, like nostalgia, that people like me in my life who believe that everything behind them is better than what could possibly be No, nothing be justifies ahead. some fucking dude in his fucking 40s showing up on your front lawn with his goddamn brood of kids yelling at them about what about his childhood. And I did not give a fuck. That's great. You didn't give a fuck. I I wanted to try to have that relationship cuz my brother had it. My brother had it with him. But I didn't. And I felt like I was missing something. Man. I felt like I was missing something as a kid. I grew up around nothing but normal families. I was the different one. My family, my parents are separated. Everyone else told me yeah, my dad took me here last weekend, and it was really neat, and I learned this and did that. What did you do? Um, my mom and dad yelled at each other a lot this weekend. <laughs> and my dad, uh, something about pain pills, I, I don't know, I was really upset, I went to my room. Those were my stories. So, here's my brother with actual relationship with my father. And it wasn't great, but it was something. And I didn't have that. And I thought it was going to be something that would really make me... I don't know, understand things better, be able to relate to others. Where I was from and where I grew up with, that was a missing element that I could never talk about. I had no positive stories when it came to family, at least on my dad. I was always, my mom did this, my mom did that, I learned this from my mom, we did this with my mom, nothing about my pops, and here's these fucking nuclear families with their mom and dad and their other sibling, and everything is a fan fucking tastic fairy world where everybody did this and that and oh boy and everything was okay at the end and everyone learned a valuable lesson yeah. and fucking ice cream was at the end of everything i don't know why there's always ice cream people in nuclear families love the fuck out of some ice cream i learned <laughs> yeah i think you're right well also yeah. just cooking and like food in general is way more of a family thing because mm -hmm. like they'll cook and talk about food and make food for each other and it's like this is so fucking weird like my my eating at my house was there's some microwave shit that my mom will put in the microwave and then that's it. Like no sitting down and eating, no cooking, no nothing. Just like here's some shit from the microwave. Eat it while you play your video games. I mean, you grew up with that, but, but did, did like, you? And this is the difference between us is like what you're describing of like being so different from other people and having such a weird family unit and and finding uh, seemingly normal family units so so different from what we have like I had that same experience except the difference is you didn't give a shit well no it's, it's beyond didn't give a shit I liked it uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it I never wanted it to change but my parents left me alone they were so they were so involved with their own bullshit they left me alone I gotta do whatever I wanted. I, I got to just. Sit I didn't up. have that. I sat up in my room playing fucking Pokemon or goddamn whatever the shit I wanted. I didn't have that. I had to still put up with both of them. Problem is, it like made me this really 
annoying fucking kid. Because I absolutely hated smoking. And every time my dad would piss me off, I'd take all his cigarettes and fucking hide them. Yeah, no, I don't. People, people that are having problems neglect their children. You had an opportunity to go hide and be neglected, and which is a great feeling. <laughs> I loved it. Remember, and kids. Sometimes they'd be fucking parents, and I hated it. Be like, you can't play fucking civil. You can't play on the computer. You can't play Civilization Two. But for like two hours today, I'm like, motherfuckers, why can't you just die and leave me the computer? Remember, kids, you want to be a great kid, go hide and be neglected. <laughs> wow, Thomas, that is a new... Uh... Fuck yeah, I'd love to raise me. It's like, here's a Game Boy. Done for years. I think... I don't know why you have done this thing. <laughs> no, wait, wait. I don't know why I did either. You're never going to be able to get back on. You'll know that. <laughs> I do know that. You'll know that. And you're just going to bash the shit... Well, there... No, there's, there's a way back on right in front of you if you can just get there. I know. <laughs> yes, turn the lights on and off. That'll do it. <laughs> I'm trying to like reconnect the trailer and see if that'll help wait there's a slight turn slight turn straighten out <laughs> don't give up on me yeah it's tow time It's, but why did you enjoy being neglected? Didn't, wouldn't you have wanted like a family experience? No, I'd rather play my fucking Game Boy. Maybe you do have like... Aspergers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's it. Like I, I think I just. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's nice like, to see where the fuck I'm going. Well, you, I think. Uh, this is just my perception, but I think sensitivity and emotional needs just come from when you're lacking something in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're insecure in some way. You're lacking something in some way. You're... I mean, you Fuck need you, other people. I've never needed other people. I I am me. I'm perfectly fine being alone. I like being alone. Uh, I don't... I don't have fucking time for anybody else. Like, I mean... The thing is, if a connection is good and I like it, and I like having that person around, then I'm going to foster that, and I like that, and I enjoy that, and I have no problem with that. You know? it does. It's not like it doesn't make sense to me, or I have trouble with it. Like, no, I do perfectly fine with it. But if someone... If I don't like being around someone, like my dad, then fuck it. Why would I engage in that? See, I never realized how much my dad sucked until, like, when I was older. I didn't realize any of those concepts until I was older. I was just, I must be missing out on something. Because every other person I associate with is telling me that I'm missing out on something. And because I didn't understand it, I didn't know it, it was an unknown thing. And no matter how hard I fucking tried, I couldn't get it. I'm going to fuck <laughs> this truck up for cutting in front of me. Third person is shit. <laughs> Let the world know the load bringer takes no prisoners. Holy fuck. Don't get in front of me, bitch. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> you will move and yield to the load bringer's might. I love that they always put on their hazards. <laughs> Uh oh, there's a crisis. Like the first I better turn on my hazards. The first thing this guy does <laughs> when a fucking tractor trailer smashes into him and turns him on his side, he's just sitting there, fucking horizontal, and he's like, Well, time to turn on my blinkers. <laughs> this is a hazard. <laughs> this will let other drivers know that I am in distress. <laughs> I must alert my fellow robotic <laughs> drivers that I am in peril. I'm doing this for safety reasons. And then he clicks it, and then just sits there. I have, <laughs> I have alerted the world. I will now wait for my rescue. 
This is my purpose. This is my moment to shine. I've never hit this button before. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> Uh, and it's just it's just a toggle. It's one universal thing. It's the same thing. Barely bumped by anyone. Hazards. Fucking mall. <laughs> I took very little damage from that, surprisingly. Yeah, the damage model's weird. Like, for tipping an entire fucking truck, mounting it, no less. Yeah. Well, on, on Monday's show, I was talking to David about uh, social pressure, mm. people feel, feeling social pressure. I feel like the family stuff is kind of like that. Do you, did you experience some sort of emotional stress or tor- turmoil from perceived social pressure? Yeah, dude. Constantly. That's so weird to me. But, again, it was, everybody was telling me that's weird when I told them what was going on with me. Yeah. I was a goddamn I mean, beyond, alien. Beyond family, of like just with normal stuff. Like, did you see people being what you perceive to be normal? Not just with families, but like, you perceive somebody to be successful or cool or have things figured out. And oh, when I was younger, all the fucking time. Or even just, I would get jealous and mad at them. Yeah, I would look at them and be like, "What? What makes you so different from me? Why have you discovered this?" This, this secret. And I keep looking at their life and comparing it to mine. And I keep seeing what was, like, on the, on the scale of what is considered normal, different where mine didn't fall in. And obviously, with how, again, this is more how I perceived how life looked at everything. This was a flaw. This was bad. I need to change it. I.e., again, my father. Well, I, I did not know how to change it. What about, um, like, if, 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 Seemingly everyone has done something. Mm-hmm. Do you then feel compelled that you now need to do it? Currently, no. Back then, I would think about it. Well, I mean, like, the, the example I was talking about was I was watching a, a stand-up special by Mike Birbiglia, and he was talking about, like, everybody in school had made out with somebody, had made out with chicks. Mm-hmm. So now he... It's not that he wanted to make out with chicks, it's that everyone else had done it, and he wanted to fit in. To fit in, I would always lie about something like that. Yeah, that's... But it was just easier to say that than try to be like, yeah, yeah. I've got proof. But that's still responding to social pressure. It was. And it was very abundant in middle school. Like, and I, I never school. lied because I was just like, fuck these people. It's not worth compromising my own personal integrity just to fool these people. I don't care about them. God, you're such an Asperger's kid. You don't even fucking <laughs> and, know it. And <laughs> You just don't even know I'm it. I'm so not, but whatever. <laughs> whatever, Thomas. You are the king of Asperger's. So fucking not. I just don't have your... Whatever, Down Syndrome I'm kid. I'm just not born with your problems. Whatever, Down Syndrome kid. You're, no, you're insecure and you need... See, I... No, when I was younger, I was insecure and then I fucking no, realized... you're still sensitive. You're still very sensitive. I am a sensitive guy. Yeah. Because I care about things. Because you're weak. And you're lacking something. I was more referring to, like, I'm sensitive towards relationships and stuff. Right, but I'm sensitive about relationships when I'm in them. Yeah. When I like them. I don't lack that. I mean, I'm completely content being single. It's kind of weird, I've noticed. Uh, Whenever I'm in a relationship, I am single for as long as I'm out of that Like, I'm I'm single for as long as I was in said relationship. First relationship, four years. Single for four years. Second relationship, uh, a year. Single for a year. That relationship after that... Dated for two years, single for two years. Yeah, my that was like a weird trend I noticed. My relationships do not last that long. I also, am... a thing that has always been true: no relationship I've ever had survives my birthday. I mean, it'll get passed, but it's already dead. Uh, All right. Well, obviously, as soon as your birthday rolls around, jump out there. I mean, just start throwing the Thomas signals. What? Even better. Line up a woman just before your birthday. Oh wait, you're, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so yeah, to I maximize to... its length. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and then or even better, line up a woman, and then she's like, "So what are you doing this weekend?" Don't say your birthday. Be like, "Um, I'm just really busy. I've got this thing." But Monday at like midnight, <laughs> mid- set Sunday midnight at 12:01, we're cool. Do you want to do something kind of official? And then you just roll with it because that will maximize your Thomas time before the impending doom. God, that'd be, like, sad if it was true, too. Every birthday would be the most depressing thing ever. My birthdays are already the worst. I hate my birthdays. Really? Yeah. Um, Fucking engine failure. The... the, Because my birthday is in February, the beginning of February, 
and I fucking hate winter. I hate it. I love it. I hate it. I know, you sweat like a motherfucker, and you love it. I mean, so that makes me, all, like, it, it's cold down to my fucking bones. But I hate it. It's just a shitty time. The world looks shitty. Everything is shitty. The temperature's shitty. Dude, I no. love wearing coats. No. I love white. No. I love Summer, a nice blanket of white. T-shirts, sweaty ladies in bikinis, sunshine, green fucking shit I like everywhere. Skiing. I mean, summer's no, fantastic. Even the what sun cool is too. uglier in winter. Dear God, you are just a bitter winter man. I hate it. I hate it. That's why I love Florida. It's because I'm like, the, the sun is more direct. It is closer to it. Yes. It, but like, the because like, it's all about the angle. Because like, in winter, the sun is angled more away from us. That's mm. why it's cold. And you can tell that just in the light. You can see it in the light. The light of winter is, is different than the light of summer. I hate even the light. Ah, God, I hate you... it. Fucking Asperger's to the... No. I'm not going to be happy Fuck until you. you like actually Fuck see you. a professional. You no. are a Down Syndrome kid. And you just don't so even know it. not. You're a Down Syndrome kid and what, you don't know it. What relationship your pa- I, Your have parents I... have tested you no. and they've hid the results. No. One day you're going to go to your I'm mom just, I'm just and you're going to be like... I'm just a emotional being. No, you're going to go to your mom and be like, hey mom... I went and saw a specialist. I think I might have a form of Down syndrome. And she's going to stop everything she does, look you in the eye and go, I always knew this day would come, Thomas. She's going to open up a folder from when she had you tested as a child. These are your results. And you'll be like, you knew. Yes, but to protect you from yourself, I raised you normal. They said it was nurture, not nature. God, I was wrong, Thomas. They tried to say my brother has Asperger's. Maybe he does. I don't really give a shit. He's a fucking wacko. Oh, yeah, that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he might be Asperger's. Uh. If he's Asperger's, Asperger's doesn't mean anything. Because apparently then Asperger's would be everything in between being a complete fucking insane person and being mildly inept at emotional relationships. Well, apparently there's like a debate whether or not it's even a real... Yes, of course there is. Because it's not fucking real. We all have shades of autism. If autism is a spectrum... Like, the way you should measure it is by, is it debilitating? Not, right, right. do you have touches of it? Why is there someone at my door? I know who it is. Cut! Okay, we're back. Yeah, so, yeah. I had to bring my mom with me so she could go to yeah, a place did, down the road. Dustin's mom just knocked on my door. I had to, she had to go somewhere, and I had to be in this area anyway. So I went, oh, cool, you can come with me, and then I'll do this, you'll do that, and whatever. That's who the ghost caller is. Yeah, well, I assumed someone else had your phone. Yeah. All right, then. My specifications were, hey, look, this episode's going to take at least an hour. And I figured she would have put two and two together and went, See, oh. and because she fucking knocked, that just created more editing work for me. <laughs> and, the, and all that editing work is just for us to say goodbye. I know. Great. Super thanks. I assumed when I said hour of recording or recording an episode, one would think not to bother, not to disturb, not to, I don't know, interrupt. But to be fair, how old are you, Dustin? 27. All right, then. Which means... And you're driving around with your mom. I drove her to where she needed to go. Right. She needs to go somewhere. I don't know. Like, I just ever since I've been uh, like a legal adult, I have not had anything to do with my parents really. So, I just I always I, I, I know you look at that as kind of like a yeah, the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. Well, it's, also my dad dragged his fucking bitchy mother around all the time when I was a kid. Yeah, it, it's it's a surprisingly common and normal thing. Man, my grandmother is the worst. Which one? You thought you said that you um, had one you least liked. The one, one I that was like okay. is on my mom's side. Pretty much, no, anybody I'm related to that I like is on my mom's side. Okay. Um, so your dad's mother is the fucking worst in the world. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> that great. sounds like it's going to be great. Because uh, my dad and his sister live here, and they got so fed up with her shit uh, of just dealing with her that they sent her to go live with their brother who lives in Alabama. And that lasted for maybe a couple years. He sent her away. That's and great. He drove, and then he, their brother drove her and her shit 
all the way back up here to Virginia from Alabama. I was like, this is your problem now. I'm done. And, uh, yeah, that's been that. That's, but, uh... Her fucking kids who take care of her can't fucking stand her and trade them between each other. That's so fucking My bad. grandmother is the worst. She, she bought fucking, like, you know, like, headphones or earmuffs? Yeah. But without speakers? <clears throat> Like a gun, just to like drown you, out other people. Like you would, like you would wear a gun. Yeah, right yeah, now? yeah. Just to drown out other people. <laughs> she, when she would go into anywhere playing any sort of contemporary music, like rock music, mm. pop music, anything that isn't classical music, uh, she and even if it was barely audible, she would put those fucking things on and then. Talk about how she bought these things at a gun range and she can't stand music, like modern music and how garbage it is and everything. She would take her gum out and put it on the table. On the table! Constantly warning. Uh, and my air conditioning just kicked on. Dude. Like, Everything is conspiring to fuck with this podcast today. Apparently. The next, the two other things I need are them to cut the grass, which, you know what they did yesterday, so alright. And then two, sirens. Outside. We've already had sirens. Well, no, I'm saying everything needs to fuck with me today. No, I mean, we've, we've already had sirens during recording. I know, I'm saying for yeah. this show, since we've already hit all of our other bases, fuck it, let's get them all. I just want some Mexican guy with like a leaf blower. Well, no, like I'm saying, sometimes they cut the grass here, and then they'll have the fucking like weed whacker thing just smacking up against my door. And I'm like, great. <laughs> great. That sucks. But uh, you were talking about the gum thing. There's a kid in middle school. It grossed me the fuck out. The tables under middle school were the grossest. No end of collection of gum underneath them. Everybody just slapped their fucking gum underneath there. And One I get... time when I was in middle school, I was sitting at... I'm just going to cut you off. because Obviously, you thank you. Please continue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh... Your story is so much more important than mine, obviously. All right, you tell me the gum story, and then we'll compare. No, 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 you've already no, started. No, you already started. Tell me the story. You're right, I've already been indignant. And we'll, we'll see. All right. So I would just assume everyone would get to lunch with a big heaping wad of gum in their mouth. Oh, I'm about to put food in. Well, don't need this anymore. So they pull it out, and they slap it underneath the table. And I've looked underneath there, too. It is mountains of it. It is, like, generational gaps worth of gum. You can almost see where discontinued gum is just stuck underneath there. This one kid would sit at the table with us. He would peel the gum from under the table. No, no, no. Roll it up. No. Play with it. And wear it as a mustache. And it's no longer colored. It is this brown, gray, or black gum. Something that has absorbed every piece of dirt and lint possible what to is discolor wrong with that it. Kid? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He. He was really gross, and he would wear the mustache while he ate his lunch. He would wear the pre-chewed somebody else's gum, and he'd pick a fresher piece, something that was like maybe only a couple days or a week old, because it still was pliable. The older stuff was too hard to mess with, he said. The pliable stuff stuck very well to his skin. Dude, it was just revolting. Everyone, the first time it happened, we all did that double take. We looked at each other and like, is this happening? Dude. Dude. He's putting it on his lips. He made a mustache. <laughs> and he's just caring about it, like this is a normal thing. That is disgusting. He never chewed it. He never chewed it, thank God. He I was going to say, that would have been the ultimate. But he wore it. Now, don't <laughs> get me wrong. He might have at some point chewed that gum. <laughs> But after two days, I, I no like longer sat it, with that kid. Putting it on your upper lip is... You're already almost there. It's practically in your mouth. Like, you're, you're going to get... If it's if something's on your upper lip, it's going to end up in your mouth. You're going to ingest whatever germs have been stuck there. I bet that kid has a hell of an immune system. <laughs> like, he's he is the super vaccine waiting to happen. <laughs> Shy of going to public restrooms and licking the toilet rims. Oh, that kid was so fucking disgusting. When I was in middle school one time, I was sitting at a lunch table, and somebody put their books down on a seat across the table from me. Mm -hmm. So I looked 
I, like, I, I saw them put the books down, so I went to kick their books off. So I kicked as hard as I could. Wait, wait, wait. They were on the seat across from you? Like, opposite table. Like, Why? I mean, on the same table, did, opposite did, of me. Yeah, did you just want to extend your legs or just want to be a dick? I wanted to kick their books off. Why? I'm in middle school. So, to be a dick. You're such a little bitch, Dustin. Yeah, You're so to such be a, a dick. little girl. No, no, I, I'm not, I'm not saying it wouldn't have been funny. But it was what just do you mean, why? Why are you asking why? I didn't know if you were all like, man, no, I want no. some leg space. I'm a male in middle school. Or you were like, hey. And that was a I'm, friend of mine, so I'm going to kick his fucking books. That's what you do. Dude, I dealt with like a bunch of middle school, like mi- middle class friends. Their idea of jokes weren't like that. They didn't play jokes or pranks or anything. No, you don't. It's not a prank. You're being a... Fuck they, him. They weren't dicks. <laughs> no, nobody ever did anything like that. It was the fucking... See, this is what happened, is I'm hard now. <laughs> Cause the... My life was tough. Dude, I had the perfect <laughs> nuclear family friends everywhere. People weren't rough or hurtful or mean. Anyone who was was considered a bully. All you had to do to be a fucking bully in my school was to look at somebody and go... I went to school with a guy whose dad got killed by cops. And not like once... It's not like a story he had. Like, one day he came in and his, and the night before his dad had been shot to death by cops. Fuck. Yeah. No, your school had character. He, he, he could not attend the D.A.R.E. stuff that was presented by cops because he hated fucking cops. <laughs> Don't blame him for hating cops. <laughs> but, again, all throughout elementary and middle school, it was the middle class kids with the perfect look of your family and all it took to be a bully was just a simple name. Like, all you had to do was look at somebody and, and just say, you're a nerd. And that's it. You were the big bad bully. You were the hard ass of the school. It was not a hard challenge Man, to meet that. the people I and went oh to school with. And oh my god, if anyone ever heard of somebody getting slapped, we didn't have fights. Somebody would get touched roughly. <laughs> like, Well, yeah, nobody really fought. Cause no, 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 no. White kids are bitches. Oh, dude, fucking. When I went to high school, that shit fucking changed. What? Okay, my high school was different. Elementary to middle school, all bitch work. High school was when I finally got exposed to shit going down. And it wasn't a gentle, tr- it wasn't a gentle segue into a rougher state. It was, oh shit, that kid just threw another kid through a window. You went, what the fuck? That's awesome. I didn't get to see, dude. Well, the- I was stunned. I'd, I'd never seen this before. I went, God damn. Man, he must have pissed him off. Oh man, I hope those friends make up. Cause that's what I thought it was. Those two friends are having a hard altercation that went out of hand. By golly, they need to be... You're such a naive little girl, man. Dude, that all shifted in like the span of a few months. Everything in my mind said the of what was... The people I went to school with would make fun of retards, and uh, that wasn't no thing. That was not unusual. Again, we had an entire block at our school called the G-Building. G-Squad kids were the slow classes. Any motherfucker who was in G-Building was always known as G-Squad, and if you did something dumb or retarded... It's like, you retarded G-Squad But did they make fun of G-Squad to their face? Yes. All right. They would see them going like, what up, G-Squad? And they kind of do like the thing as the teacher's <laughs> looking at him and going, you stop making fun of these special gifted kids. All right, so I see what happened. The people you went to school with got into high school and hardened the fuck up. I, no, the people I, went, the, the people I went into middle school with went into my high school and were the preps, but weren't hard-ass preps. Everyone else I went to middle school went somewhere else. And I got, like, the derelict runoff of the gutter trash. I got the fucking 4chan of high schoolers. And I had to learn how to fit into 4chan quickly. I found I found an acceptable group with the grunge kids. All right, but so... So I had to learn to like ICP. Are, oh, my God! I had to learn to appreciate and respect the Juggalos. Are you fucking kidding me right no. now? No. But because I did that, the fucking Juggalos had my back. High school became how what, how I learned how to fucking work you every goddamn social school. You sacrificed your soul for some friends in no, high school. I said I didn't, I didn't say they were my friends. I said I learned how to respect the Juggalos. I didn't say that, you oh boy. You sacrificed your soul just to respect other people? How about respect yourself no, no, and I, not take that garbage into your You know how I respected myself? Because those motherfuckers had my back if anyone ever gave me shit. No. No. Through no. them. No. Through the juggalos. No. 
through the fucking juggalos, no. I was established. No. And I was able to no. work other social circles. No. Because of my previous ties in middle school to the preps, they all knew me and liked me. They were like, oh yeah, Dustin, he's always Nothing a really nice guy. Nothing justifies it, ICP. He was a super nice guy. I liked him. Including, like, the fucking really hot head of cheerleaders. They would at least say, hi, Dustin, and wave to me and be super nice. And I didn't really care about uh, him, but it was I, nice to be acknowledged. I really least. got you something. Yeah, I didn't give a shit, but it was at least nice to be acknowledged and not made fun of. It just all worked out for the better. See, I didn't get made fun of. I didn't get, I didn't want to be acknowledged. Just wanted people to leave me alone. That's it. It was fine by me. I learned. Everybody fuck off. Dude, I learned social skills in high school through this. Anyway. I had no goddamn so social skills. this guy's books are across the table, right? Juggling, juggling, juggalos. Uh, I. <laughs> so this guy's books are on the seat across the table. Yeah. So I know his books are there. I go to kick them as hard as I can. Unbeknownst to me, there is a metal bar going across the, the middle of under the table. <laughs> so I'm sure your shin now has a dent in it. So I think there is still a mark. <laughs> and this was in middle school. I fucking just kicked as hard as and we're talking like my I'm I'm sitting normal, my my thigh to my shin is at a ninety degree angle, and I completely I just flip my shin out to kick it. And it just slams into that metal bar. Dong. The whole so goddamn happens, table lurches up. Is, yeah, I, I kick it really hard, and I go, ah! And I put my feet back down, and I slam my hands to the table. Going, ah! <laughs> Dude, in unison, both of my friends then get up and slam my hands with their fists. <laughs> so, <laughs> my shit is bleeding, and I'm holding my smashed hands in front of my face. Going, ah! And I just slowly limp away to the clinic. <laughs> uh, I never got my ass, like, fuck that bad. I'd have people... You... You'd... I'll, <clears throat> High school I went to was an outdoor campus. A lot of grassy, a lot of grass in between the schools and shit, but also very hilly. It was a common thing to get tackled down the hill by a friend <laughs> who would run and just like jump and check and you'd both go tumbling down. So that was the normal response you would get. Walk, walk, walk. Think fast. What? Ah, thump, 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 thump. <laughs> and you thump your way down the hill and have teachers yell at you. Y'all are roughhousing. I'm not going to report you. Burp, burp, burp. Then you just both had to go, nothing. We tripped. <laughs> Because they have to have someone to blame. If there's no one to blame, what really happened? I tripped and he tried to catch me and we both fell. <laughs> or I slipped and accidentally grabbed my friend. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> you, you can't get him in trouble for that. What's going to be on the report? Claims they tripped and fell and rolled down the hill in a but very I know gay better. fashion. That's bullshit. Yeah. I'm, oh, man. Mr. Herbin. Oh, dude, he was the T-1000 of fucking superintendents. I'm not joking. Like... You think T-1000 and Terminator, oh man, scary dude. Imagine the T-1000 was in charge of truancy. Imagine something that overzealous to the point that he would chase you on foot off school campus and catch you and bring you back in cuffs. He was a hard ass. You did not skip school on days Herman was there. And if you did, you were a legend if you got away. The only time you'd ever get away is if you ran through the cornfield. And that didn't always work. Because people, he would just go in and disappear, and he'd come back five minutes later, walking you and your handcuffs out. He was a hard ass. He wouldn't turn you into the cops. He would fucking write your ass up for detention and put you back in that classroom. He did his job, and he did it right. But he was all business suit, too. He didn't run, wear, like, jogging pants. He ready. He wore his black slick-bottom shoes, his tie, which not a clip-on, but never became messy somehow, his <laughs> perfectly tucked shirt, which no matter how much physical or strange exercise he did, never became untucked in his <laughs> black pleated pants. <laughs> he had this immaculate outfit that would subtly change throughout the week with small details, but could never be ruffled. It was always thought that his pants and, suit and, and, and shirt were one. They were not separate entities. He just kind of <laughs> stepped in and something pressed the suit to him and he stepped out about his day. He was amazing terrifying and I had an assistant principal in middle school whose last name he was Mr. Sukonic so <laughs> he was known as suck on it yep <laughs> <laughs> he was the guy that <laughs> sat there and watched my lesbian porn in front of me 
Yes, Mr. Suck on it <laughs> was watching porn at max volume in his office with the door open in the middle of school. Were, were you caught with porn? We already talked about this, Dustin. Yeah. Your memory's terrible. It is. I mean, to be fair, this was one of our earliest episodes, but... I'm sorry, we've had so many. Delightful, high-rating, fantastic... This actually is episode 49, I believe, so... And stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to have a spectacular 50th episode coming up. Not really. Probably not. It's going to be... It's going to be... I mean, hey, if you think this is spectacular, then it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be kind of... Kind of we do have a pretty badass energy going on, but dude, Herbert scared the it, fuck out of me. It is day. time to end this show. Though, this All right, one. let me finish this one story. Herbert scared the fuck out of me. I used to go to two high schools, so I always caught a bus in the middle of the day. I'd show up at Verano where he was, so I got off the bus and I'm always late for class. Fifteen minutes. It was normal. It was accepted. It's what happened. <laughs> Except Herbert had no fucking idea. So I step off the bus. Bus pulls away. Start walking to class. Doop doop. I'm in no rush. My teacher knows I'm fifteen minutes late. Here's this most panic, scared looking kid hauling ass <laughs> and looking over his shoulder <laughs> wide eyed. And all of a sudden, here comes the T1000, hands like this, just foom, foom. A stride that is not possible for a middle aged man. He is clearing five feet with every push of his feet. <laughs> and then he looks over to the side to see me. And without breaking speed, stride or direction, points, don't move. <laughs> and continues hauling ass after this kid who breaks off the campus onto the street and hears Herbert still behind him <laughs> and gaining fast. <laughs> it was it was so scary how fast this guy was. It's like if Lance Armstrong had his bike and was in charge of chasing you on foot. I didn't stand still. I ran to my class. It's like, <laughs> Herbert yeah. doesn't know me that well. <laughs> and I got this heavy ass backpack, but I knew the way, the quickest way. I just get to my class. You know what? That's the funniest thing is seeing seeing kids run with a heavy ass backpack. Yeah. Because like the motion of them running is causing the backpack to then move, and it moving then causes them to to move in weird ways. Ugh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's episode. Yes, it is. Thank you for staying with us on this wonderful FTRT podcast episode. Excuse our breaks and our fucking it up. And the other miscellaneous noises you've been hearing throughout this episode. Or don't. You think I give a fuck? Yeah, you're gonna care enough to fucking sync this up right. I didn't care about anybody in school. You think I don't... You think... It, well, I do care about you, podcast listener. Because you're listening to my podcast. That makes me care about you. That, love, makes, that makes us care about you. I love you and your buttholes. Especially you, our number one fan. Yeah. All, all of them are our number one fans in my heart, Dustin. You cheesy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, we're done. <laughs>